Hello and welcome to another episode of Jacob's House of Rock. And today, I've got a special episode for you guys. So, I've been promising to do this one for a while now, actually. And yeah, today's the day uh, that we take a good, uh, very in-detail look at a Rico sound circuit. And more importantly, how to uh, wire it and install it and all that good stuff. And, and I'll do a little sound demo at the end, why not? Uh, so yeah, this is another episode in my series about my uh, Chinese copy Rickenbacker bass and how I've been uh, modding them and stuff like that. Uh, this is my second one, by the way, if you guys haven't been checking out that uh, video series. But yeah, uh, basically what a Rico sound circuit is, is it's a, uh, a type of circuit that is uh, very well known on Rickenbacker basses and guitars. Now, of course, this one's a fake, but <laughs> the real ones... Uh, do have it and that's why I really want to install one onto this thing to make it as close as I can to the original uh, So the way it works is it's basically a, a system where you can split the signal from both pickups and send them to separate amps and The reason you may want to do this of course is to put different effects and different sounds uh, different sort of you know EQing and settings like that on either pickup to and then blend and you know you record them back and then you blend them together again and you get an interesting uh, much more layered deeper sound uh, think of uh, you know bassists like Chris Squire a lot of his sound is entirely based upon using this feature which is really only found on these sort of uh, or at least known to have been found on these sort of instruments now th there are it's not just the basses that use them also Rickenbacker guitars also had this feature and yeah it basically what you need is you need an instrument with at least two pickups and it would help if you had uh, something like this which is a little uh, plate for two jacks to fit in so of course at the moment I have only one in here because I was modding this thing uh, a little bit earlier and I um, for for random reasons I didn't put the second one on because I didn't need just a second jack that does the same thing as the first one uh, but today we're gonna change that so um, let's take a look at the pieces that you'll need like I said uh, something like this is a good thing to have of course you don't have to have it set up ex you know physically in the same to look the same as it is here you could just have the jacks on the pick guard or wherever or you could even use a different wiring mechanism to do something with switches which would mean that you wouldn't need these exact same parts but I'm going to try and show you guys how to do this as close to how they actually do them on Rickenbacker bases which may or may not be the best way of going about it as I'll elaborate on a little bit later but it's the only way we can do it at the moment without you know resorting to switches and stuff all right guys so these are your two com most important components uh, in this hand I hold a simple stereo jack uh, you know quarter inch socket you can see that there it's just got um, a little two leads for the sleeve and the, and the tip or, or the sh whatever they're called uh, of the the jack when when it goes in through here and this is this is very self-explanatory if you're familiar with these things this is just where your signal is split uh, either pickup is of either of these two leads and of course this thing is ground and um, yeah these are very easy to come by uh, very cheap I, this isn't even a switchcraft one it's just a, a, a cheap knockoff one very easy to find now this is where it gets complicated I've already done a video on this thing uh, this is actually your mono jack, you believe it or not, even though it has all these little intricate little switching bits at the top and all these little leads. The reason for this is fairly simple. Uh, see this little switch here? When you push a jack through it, now I'm just going to bring in a random one. Uh, when you push a jack through it, in theory, yeah, there we go. You see that little white plastic bit at the top? It pushes this bit back and it connects these two plates. What that does is it connects both separate pickups. Uh, so the signal, you'd have them going uh, attached separately uh, from each pickup into either one of these plates. And then once it, these two are connected together, only then is uh, the signal, you know, uh, connected to this little tip piece in the mono, this main tip piece into the mono jack. And it goes, you know, out into your amp and you get the signal from both pickups. 
sorry if that doesn't make sense to you guys, but uh, <laughs> I don't really know how to elaborate on it more simply. Uh, but what, what you want to happen is when you remove the mono jack, you want that signal to no longer be connected. And you can see there, between these two plates, they are no longer connected, which means that the both pickups are not connected anywhere in the circuit at this point, which means that when, when the signal is sent into the stereo jack, there's nothing, uh, you know, this, this mono jack isn't connected in a way that's going to interfere with the signal from either pickup w once it goes through this jack. Uh, I hope that makes sense, but yeah, basically you need the signal from both pickups to be separate at all times when, when you're using the stereo jack feature. And that's why that little switching mechanism there is inbuilt into that jack. So there is probably a simpler way of doing this, and that would be if you, you had a, uh, if they engineered a different jack, which was very similar to this stereo jack. So again, so again, just looking at this one closely here, it has the two leads that come out the top. Uh, one is designed to go to the very tip of the jack that would go in here, and the other one is designed to go around the ring section of a stereo uh, quarter inch jack. Sorry, it went blurry again. However, if we had one of these designed where it had two tips, like this top one, where it went to the very tip of a mono jack, like uh, this one at the top here, if they had two different tips that touched this part, but they didn't touch when you pulled it out, for example, if they didn't touch when you did that, then that would be sufficient to use as the mono jack in the circuit, and then you could use that as the mono jack and just have a second stereo jack uh, as the stereo of the circuit, and you wouldn't need this elaborate sm switching mechanism that you get on this little switchcraft number 13 jack here. Um, that's just my little interpretation of what they could have done. I don't know, but they've been doing this thing since the bloody 60s, so yeah, I don't, I doubt they're going to change the, the way they make these things now. Um, even though it would be a little bit of a simpler solution, but you would need to have a special, uh, a specially designed uh, jack, uh, you know, socket like this. But just like I said, with two leads that both touch uh, an, an, an input mono one like this, but at the, both at the top, and then when you pull it out, that they don't touch. Which, you know, may be a little tricky to make, but I, I think they could do it and it would probably be a lot simpler than this thing. Anyway, that's just my little little um, conceptual idea about that. Uh, Rickenbacker and, and Switchcraft, if you want to steal my idea, go ahead. I'm not going to start um, investing in it, I doubt it. <laughs> and trying to um, become a, a, an electrical designer. So if you want to take that idea, it would be nice if you uh, give me some credit on that. But... Just go for it. I don't know. Um, so yeah, let's get into this. So in order to wire these together, it's fairly simple, uh, but it was a little bit tricky to find some decent wiring diagrams on, the, uh, on this stuff online. And a little while back when I was first modifying my original Chickenbacker, that's Chinese copy Rickenbacker base, or Chinese Rickenbacker meshed into one word, uh, but yeah, when I was trying to modify that to be as close as I could to an actual Rickenbacker base, it was really difficult to find decent uh, and accurate wiring diagrams for this sort of stuff. All, all of them were different, and I couldn't find the most accurate ones. And I did, after so many hours of research and drawing up diagrams and things for a couple of days, I came up with a couple of designs for you uh, to, you know... A couple of wiring diagrams to look off of, and I posted this stuff up as as you know as videos to help you guys out. And uh, one great one, one one legend um, decided since they saw me uh, posting this sort of stuff, uh, they were actually a schematics or wiring diagram designer, a drawer upper person as well, and they just decided to publish their own wiring diagram pictures, which were far superior to anything that I came up with. So um, I'm going to post up a little slideshow of a couple of these wiring diagrams. Uh, the big colorful ones are mine. The black and white flat ones are by this guy. Uh, I'll, his name will be visible 
uh, when these things are posted up. I forgot his name, uh, but you'll see them in, in front of these pictures. And here are some wiring diagrams for how to wire Rickenbacker, as well as specific ones on how to wire the uh, actual Rico sound feature. And I'm going to, you know, show you guys how I do it. Uh, with these but basically if you're following on at home uh, just go by these wiring diagrams and you'll you, you'll be golden you know Alright, so aside from your actual jacks here, what you're going to need is some wires. So I just prepared the uh, specific wires that we're going to need to wire up these two jacks together. Uh, additionally, we will have the wires running from the rest of the circuitry in the base, but I'll get to those later. Uh, we'll work on these uh, few wires here. So I color-coded them just to coincide with the picture uh, that I showed you guys, so I've actually just got it a little copy of that on my phone so hopefully so this picture here uh, that's the one I designed and of course you can use the other one for reference as well uh, but as you can see here on my picture here this orange line represents the electronics that are going from the the bridge pickup while the green lines represent all the signal that runs from the neck pickup and the blue is just the grounding wires. Uh, so I tried to replicate that with these wires. Uh, color wise a little different but it doesn't matter you can call these any color you want. I think the other wiring diagrams that I show actually have the exact same color that Rickenbacker use uh, but I, it doesn't really matter as long as they're wires. Um, so of course we got our blue one for our grounding wire. Uh, this red one here is going to represent our bridge pickup, all of those uh, signals. And these two wires, the one longer one and the one little short one, is going to represent our neck pickup wiring. Now, of course, you could have all these wires, like I said, any color you want. They could all be purple for all it matters, <laughs> just as long as they um, are wired correctly. I also got this little shrink tubing, uh, heat shrink tubing, so uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to cut some pieces of these uh, just because there's going to be a lot of wiring going on in a small area so you want to have all of these little tops uh, sealed where you actually solder on the wiring so it doesn't interfere with any of these sort of things and that'll just cover up all the joints and all of that so uh, just make sure you have a heat shrink tubing that just barely fits over the tops of these little um, lugs that you have on your jacks and just cut an amount that's a little bit longer uh, that'll cover up that length so I'm probably kinda gonna cut it up into these little lengths so probably cut both these tubes into uh, into threes and that should hopefully give us enough little bits of shrink wrap tubing for this thing first steps first we get a soldering iron ready we get a solder and we position these things so that we can actually reach in and, and install them. So I'm just using these little helping arms here which help a lot and the place where we want our ground is of course the very the part that is connected to the very inside of this little uh, shaft area here. So it's this, ver this one right up here. Uh, with my tutorial here, I, I think most of it's going to be a lot more self-explanatory if you just look at the wiring diagrams, less so than watching me do it, because it's probably just going to be easier to see what's going on. Now, to get the best results when soldering, uh, always heat up the joints uh, that you're soldering in the wire in there, especially these thicker little these joints on this jack here, and then just touch on the solder where you want it, and you may have to... Uh, 
may have to melt it a couple of times, but you know, you, you'll get the hang of it. Um, but yeah, if you want tips on soldering, I'm probably not the person to teach you. <laughs> so there we go. Once we have a piece of wire soldered on, what we're going to do is we're going to get our heat shrink tubing and we slide it on. Normally with some of these wires, it's best to have the heat shrink tubing already attached, like, um, you know, on it while you're soldering, just nowhere near the actual solder points, so just kind of like hanging back here, because sometimes you'll solder something and then you'll be like, oh shit, I forgot to put on the heat shrink tubing, and then you have to desolder it and do it again. You push it down, and you slide it over that little joint, and then you can see that there, hopefully. And it's as simple as just getting your soldering iron and just rubbing it across this heat shrink tubing. And then it should just shrink around that little uh, peg there and cover up uh, all those little electronic, uh, you know, metal bits <laughs> sticking out of the wire. So there'll be no chance that you'll, um, you know, sh short this thing by, you know, wires rubbing on it. So yeah, we're just going to use the same technique and just put it together based on the instructions as shown in those wiring diagrams. Okay, so I've just attached the red lead to both of these jacks and now there's this little loop piece and what I noticed is when you attach uh, the longer uh, wire to the loop piece to the jack uh, they go to the same little lug on the mono jack uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get one of these little shrink heat shrink bits and we're going to put it over both of these like so because we're going to slide that down over that lug later on and then we can twist these together and use these as just one wire and that way when we put it through here and solder that in, they shouldn't uh, come apart and it should all come together nicely, hopefully. Let me just slide that over the top and heat it up. Alright, so I actually had to remove everything that I did on the stereo jack because it turned out that I needed to have the wires from the base wiring uh, atta already attached to it before I, uh, you know, soldered everything together in the first place. So if you were doing this at home, uh, solder everything on the mono jack first is my recommendation, and then proceed uh, to solder it to everything else, including the stereo jack and the wiring from the base. So for the wiring from the base, I just have these two loose wires. These are just insulated wires, meaning they have a one wire running down the middle, and that's wrapped around with a second wire, which will be a ground. Uh, basically, just follow the diagrams as before. Uh, so what we're going to do is we take these two. I'm going to use the green one, this uh, sort of bluish green one, as the color for our bridge pickup wiring. And this black one here with the little white wires, they both got white wires coming out of them, but this black one here is going to be the neck pickup wiring. So this again has a little ground, and both of these have a ground and a hot signal coming out of them. So what we do is we take both of these two ends, right, and we get both the ground wires from each one, and we merge those together. And then now we can uh, attach these to the rest of our uh, stereo jack. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our neck pickup wires together like this. We're going to slip over, going to twist them together, and just like before we slip over a little uh, heat shrink tubing. Alright, so there's our finished circuit. Um, I did have to take apart a couple of things and put them back together just because I kept having issues again with um, uh, <laughs> putting multiple wires in and then putting the, the sleeves on. Uh, but yeah, basically just follow that wiring diagram and this is what you're going to get. It turned out pretty nice actually. So I've got these two leads here 
the black one is for the neck pickup. It's an insulated wire, and it has the little wire in the middle is the neck pickup signal, and then there's a ground wire that just covers that one as the insulation. And this is the, the green one here. It's the same, but it is the bridge pickup. So yeah, you can kind of have a nice close-up look at this thing, what it looks like and how it turned out. There's the stereo jack, <laughs> as you can see, all the wires spread out. Go to all these, and there's all the ground connections here. And from this one, from the stereo one, go into the mono one here, which has all the initial con connections that we made. And overall, I think it turned out really nice, not too complicated. Uh, like I said, I did have to undo a few things and put them back together. Basically, all I'm going to do now is, based on the wiring diagrams, I'm going to attach these leads. Uh, to the appropriate position in in the actual bass guitar so we've got our neck pickup wiring here so I'll go to the neck pickup um, either volume or tone I forget which one uh, it leads off of uh, I mean this is the bridge pickup actually not, not the neck and the neck pickup one will go off the neck pickup tone or volume whichever one that is I'll have to consult those diagrams but yeah I'm gonna do that all off screen and then put it back together and all that sort of stuff and then I'll give you guys a nice demo of what this thing sounds like. Alright guys, so here is our finished bass, complete with Rico sound, and I've also installed uh, my uh, hip shot replacement bridge here. There was a little bit of technical difficulties of getting this thing to function on this bass, so I had to adjust the truss rod and some stuff, and again, like the other chicken bucker bass, I had to put the aluminium slab under it to lift it up a little bit so I might get into that a little bit later what I did with that in another episode but today we're talking about Rico sound obviously so there it is the finished Rico sound thing we got both our jacks this one here closer to the uh, what would you call this the strap lock type thing here that is the mono jack so that's that weird switchcraft one and here's our stereo jack next to it and the way we got we um, get this to function is we just get you know a stereo lead so I got one just here get our stereo lead and we plug that in to this this jack here and the other end of this lead goes into this thing here so this is something I made off screen and another thing I wanted to note is I'm sorry that I did most of the wiring off screen for this Rico sound here uh, all this stuff especially when I wired it to the rest of the electronic electronics in the base. The reason I did it off screen is one, it's tedious to film all this stuff, and two, I was kind of embarrassed about how the electronics actually looked on the inside of my base. It's a pretty poor looking job um, with, with that sort of stuff. Uh, but, you, you know, if you follow the diagrams that I put on, you know, in this video, and I'll have some posted up on the Jake, on um, Jacob's House of Rock, the Facebook page for this YouTube channel, if you go there, you'll see all the diagrams, and you can use those to, you know, follow, and you'll get a the same sort of working result as this thing. Now, so the way we use it, like I said, we plug this in here, and it goes into this thing, and what this thing is, is this is the electronics that you'd have in something called a Rico Sound box, I believe. Uh, it might have a technical name, uh, but yeah, back in the day, Rickenbacker used to put out these little boxes that you, you basically plug in your stereo cable into, like so. And inside would be the same sort of wiring like this, and what it does is it splits your signal. So here I've got the, the side with the red lead, it goes into the... that would have all the effects and, and the sound for your bridge pickup here, whereas this blue lead is from the ring of the stereo cable and that goes from the neck pickup. So all, the, all you need to make one of these is you just need three jacks, one stereo one, two mono ones, and about three or four wires. And then you just solder those together, just like I, um, and actually just have a look at these photos, it'll show you how I made it, and I'll put a diagram up as well.
I think it's really simple to make. Another thing you can do is you can just get a cable that's a stereo lead on one end and it splits off into two mono leads. Those do exist. Either one will work, but I opted for this solution. Now with this, again, like we explained earlier, we plug either side into the amplifier that we want to use and you can put all manner of effects between here and the amp and depending on which pickup you want to go through which effect and through which amp will help you get that sound. Now the general rule of thumb uh, usually is that you'd have the neck pickup going into a nice clean sort of bassy sounding amp whereas you'd have the bridge pickup going through most of your effects and and through the more overdriven sound to get you that grit and that's how you get that classic Chris Squire tone as well as many other people have used that sort of effect to get their sound and it's really cool for some you know really rocking sort of heavy stuff you can add like a reverb or like a tremolo effect which I'll show you guys in that little demo and at the very end of the demo I will also show you what this bass sounds like when you plug plug it in mono straight into a guitar amp and why you'd want to use a Rico sound feature to basically split the signal. The interesting thing is this does a really similar thing to what a lot of bass preamps do these days except for this does it in a more interesting way that you can actually uh, play around with your two volumes and tone knobs to get a even more interesting sounds because uh, you actually have the control of having the specific volume right at hand of either pickup of either bassy clean sort of sounds from your bass pickup and more more of those gritty sounds from your treble pickup whereas the very sort of uh, different bass preamps like you get from what would you what do you call it it's a sans amp kind of thing like like these sort of ones tech 21 sans amp they have a blend feature on them let's see where's the blend there's a blend feature and what that basically does is it sends the lower end of your signal out to like the clean section and you can blend in like the more gritty top end stuff and it does a similar thing to this except for like I said you have more control over it here and you're actually splitting the pickups not your whole signal so you can actually have some high end and low end in your clean signal as well as your uh, more distorted signal another reason you would want to do this of course is if you have your all, all your sound distorted like I'm going to show you at the very end is you get a very muddy sound and uh, now if you're playing a very bassy sound if you want to have your bass like a nice low thick bassy sound but you want it distorted as well uh, it's not going to give you the best effect um, <laughs> otherwise you're going to have to turn up your your mids quite high and turn the bass quite down to really get that nice thick sound at the distorted end this gives you the bass you're going to have to turn up your your mids quite high and turn the bass quite down to really get that nice thick sound at the distorted end this gives you the best of both worlds so it's kind of like you're almost playing two instruments that are both playing the same thing but at different tones it's that sort of effect in this demo, I'm going to have the sounds panned either side, so your bassy sound is going to be this direction uh, in your ears. Hopefully if I uh, mix it all together correctly, they're not going to be completely stereo, they're going to be just panned like 19% or less either side, just so you get a little bit more of a mix. And your bridge pickup is going to be over to this side, which is my right going to be your left, basically. So. Um, your right is the bassy, bassy clean sound, your left is the bridge pick up more aggressive sound. You'll be able to tell. I'm going to be pointing to all the knobs and things that I'm changing around during the demo. And I'm really sorry in case this, the demo video and this video is a bit laggy and jumpy with the actual video. I don't know why my camera is acting up today, so hopefully that won't be too big an issue. But you'll be able to hear the sound clear as day either way. And another thing is, like I said, I'm panning them either side, but I actually kind of prefer them when they're mixed into a mono mix. So maybe listen to this out loud through some decent speakers where the sound kind of mixes together and you'll get that full, uh, full range sound. But yeah, enjoy this demo and let me know what you think, guys, in the comments below and all that good stuff.
So just quickly, what I'm going to show you guys is how this bass sounds like when it's only running through the distorted amp. So you can you can kind of get a sense of why you'd want to split the pickups and not have it all running through one amp if you want a bit of that distorted edge, because uh, you really lose a lot of that bottom end when you have it running through just a distorted amp. So I'll quickly uh, do that for you guys and give you guys a little sound demo of that. So, I hope you enjoyed that demo there. Again, sorry if the video was a bit jumpy and out of sync and all that sort of stuff. Like I said, my camera's acting up. In fact, it might be doing it right now. I don't know. But, that is my video on Rico Sound. So, you don't have to add this to the, this sort of bass specifically. You can add this to any instrument. I hope that the wiring diagrams and all of that in this video has been given you enough information to pursue something like this for your own instruments if you want to you know build that wiring and all that sort of stuff like i said there might be some more simple ways of doing this especially with switches or with like a modified stereo jack where both the tips touch the very tip and using that as a kind of way to short out the signal where you need it and all that sort of stuff um but this is the <laughs> the way they've been doing it in rickenbacker bases and yeah i hope you enjoyed that and I just gotta say, I'm so happy with this bass now. This is my, uh, you know, the Chicken Bucker bass, my second one, and I've modified it as close as I can to being, you know, as close to the real thing as possible. Obviously, I've changed out the bridge the other day. I modified this, uh, what do you call it, the mounting ring for the treble pickup. And obviously, the pickups are swapped out, all the wiring, it's got Rico sound, it's a neck through just loving this damn thing so if you guys want to pursue a project like this i highly recommend you do because uh, potentially you can get something as cool as this uh for a lot less than an actual rickenbacker base uh but your mileage will vary it is a lot of work and all that sort of stuff but i say much worth it but if you can't afford the real thing then more power to you i'd love to as well um, I don't know if this might be my last video on Rickenbacker, Chickenbacker bases. You'll definitely see this thing popping up in my other videos, but I don't know if I'm going to modify it any further in future. Maybe I'll just do a quick little video talking about the installation of this bridge. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Because I did, this bridge wasn't exactly designed to function exactly how it is on this base. 
so that is a word of warning. If you do want to get a chicken bucker, you will have to raise this bridge quite a, quite a, a high amount to get it to really function. In fact, I wish I actually raised it higher than it is now, because as you can see, it's got like a, a four or five millimeter chunk of aluminium uh, under it that I machined to fit right there. Uh, but on this base, it needs to be even higher than it was on my previous one. So it just I was just about able to get the saddles high enough, but you might be better off just using a different bridge, maybe something like a, I don't know, maybe like a hip shot, um, uh, not a hip shot, like a badass bridge type of thing, but something that's high enough, because even they're fairly low. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that really helps out the channel. And if you want more sort of informative videos like this stuff or have any questions and all that stuff, don't forget to ask and, and message me in the comments below. And yeah, uh, keep on rocking, guys. Peace out.